In a daring move amid escalating tensions with China, the U.S. has just revealed a game changer that's grabbing global attention. This game changer isn't just a regular drone, it's a powerhouse that is about to dominate the skies. With a mind-blowing price tag of $200 million, this aircraft boasts unrivaled technology, from testing the boundaries of hypersonic missiles to utilizing the most sophisticated surveillance systems known today. What makes this aircraft better than the earlier developed drones? What extraordinary capabilities does it bring to the table? Join us as we explore the features of the largest $200 million drone that is about to change the world. The U.S. Air Force has introduced the XQ-67A, a sleek, unmanned aerial vehicle that took flight for the first time in February 2024 in California, marking a significant advancement in aerial combat and reconnaissance as this advanced drone that is packed with the latest technology can fly without a human pilot, being either remotely controlled or capable of making its own decisions based on programming and data it collects, offering a glimpse into the future of military aviation. Before we get to the details of this new drone, let's go back in time to the history of these unmanned vehicles. In the early 1990s, the U.S. Air Force started to experiment on remotely controlled planes. However, these experiments only became more important in the military during the mid-1900s. During the Second World War, radio-controlled aircraft were used for target practice. These early versions helped train soldiers and eventually led to modern UAVs. These drones took on an even bigger role in the Vietnam War, with the AQM-34 Ryan Firebee used for reconnaissance missions. This important event marked the beginning of UAVs being officially recognized in military operations. These aircraft have become more advanced and sophisticated over the years. Today, the USAF makes use of different types of UAVs. Some are used to gather intelligence like the RQ-4 Global Hawk and MQ-1 Predator, while others, like the MQ-9 Reaper, are built for a more specific assignment, combat. There are also support UAVs that help with tasks like surveillance, and some strategic UAVs like the X-37B are even used for space missions. These aerial vehicles have become quite important for modern warfare because they help the military gather real-time information, carry out airstrikes with precision, and keep human pilots safe by doing dangerous missions. They can also stay in the air for long periods, providing continuous surveillance. Recent advancements have improved UAV technology, with some new models having stealth features, autonomous flight capabilities, and even the ability to work together in groups, known as swarms. However, there are challenges, such as ethical concerns, vulnerability to hacking, and high development costs. Looking ahead, UAVs are expected to become even more advanced with the help of artificial intelligence, international collaborations, and expanded use in civilian areas, like disaster response and environmental monitoring. Now let's explore this million-dollar drone that has generated a lot of buzz in the aviation world. What makes the XQ-67A stand out in a world full of drones? What makes it special is its role in a program called the Offboard Sensing Station. This high-tech drone acts like the Air Force's eyes and ears, gathering critical information in places too risky for human pilots. What's really impressive is the XQ-67A's common chassis design, which is like a universal frame, allowing the Air Force to build different kinds of drones quickly and affordably, all based on the same core structure. But it doesn't stop there. The XQ-67A is part of a growing family of drones. It builds on the earlier XQ-58 NA Valkyrie and has a combat-focused cousin in the works called the Offboard Weapon Station. These drones are reshaping the way the military thinks about air power, creating a new balance between manned and unmanned aircraft. Imagine drones flying alongside human pilots, supporting and protecting them in what the Air Force calls the loyal wingman concept. The game-changing potential of the XQ-67A is huge. With drones like this, the Air Force can carry out missions that would be too dangerous for humans, from long surveillance flights to combat operations. They can fly longer, push into hazardous areas without hesitation, and make lightning-fast decisions based on advanced data and algorithms, sometimes faster than any human pilot could react. Looking ahead, the XQ-67A is just the beginning of a future where fleets of AI-controlled drones fly in perfect sync with pilots. But this raises big questions. How will the role of pilots evolve? What happens when machines are making life-or-death choices in war? One thing's for sure, 
The future of warfare is already taking off, and it's led by autonomous aircraft like the XQ-67A. Aside from the XQ-67A, other drones have also made headlines. Let's delve into the details of some of these important unmanned vehicles that were used by the United States and what the impact they made in the aviation world before their retirement. While the United States Air Force might have retired the Predator, this unmanned aerial vehicle was quite important during its operational period. It played a crucial role in the attacks against Al-Qaeda during the War on Terrorism. The museum in Washington, D.C. has one of the first three Predators that flew operational missions over Afghanistan after September 11th. This drone marked a significant shift from manned aircraft to remotely piloted systems. Although it often flies with autopilot, it still relies on humans for control from the ground. The development of this specific drone was fast and unique. It began with Abraham Karem, an Israeli engineer who created a small UAV called the Albatross in 1983. This evolved into the Gennett 750, which the CIA used in Bosnia in the early 1990s. The larger RQ-1 Predator was later developed and became operational by 1995. This unmanned aerial vehicle was used by the Air Force to provide live video through satellite links. To make it even more impressive, it was upgraded to include a laser for guiding bombs. And by the year 2000, it was also armed with Hellfire missiles to locate Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan. However, it wasn't only useful to the Air Force alone because a museum acquired Predator number 3034 in 2004 due to its significant role in introducing armed UAVs into combat. Between September 2001 and January 2003, Predator number 3034 completed more than 164 missions over Afghanistan. It was an essential part of the shift toward armed UAVs in combat. Though the Predator carried out fewer attacks compared to manned aircraft, its impact was substantial. It excelled at locating enemy leaders and became a preferred tool for military commanders. In 2001, there were only 15 Predators in service, but by 2011, the U.S. military had nearly 11,000 UAVs. Its ability to stay airborne for long periods allowed operators to better understand ground situations. Its Hellfire missiles enabled precise strikes, often making it more accurate than manned aircraft. In a nutshell, this drone was quite essential to the USAO. Despite its success, the Predator had issues like a narrow camera view that could miss nearby activities. This led to improvements in monitoring systems. However, the production of the Predator ended in 2011, and it was gradually replaced by more advanced models like the MQ-9 Reaper and the RQ-4 Global Hawk. Now let's first delve into the details of the Global Hawk. This surveillance aircraft, which was introduced in 2001, is presently being used by the United States Air Force for high-altitude, long missions. It helps gather important information to support military operations around the world. Its advanced surveillance abilities allow for more accurate targeting of weapons and better protection of friendly forces. However, the cost of the program increased, so the plan to buy about 63 aircraft was reduced to 45. In 2013, there was also a suggestion to retire 21 of the Block 30 variants, which were used for signals intelligence. The first 10 Global Hawks cost $10 million each in 1994, but by 2001, the price had risen to $60.9 million, and by 2013, it was $131.4 million. The U.S. Navy created a version for maritime surveillance called the MQ-4C Triton. As of 2022, the USAF plans to retire its Global Hawks by 2027. What led to the development of the Global Hawk? Let's get into it. In the 1990s, the Air Force had their sights set on uncrewed spy planes, and they invested resources into their production. One of these was the stealthy Lockheed Martin RQ-3 Dark Star, and the other was the Global Hawk. But due to budget cuts, they could only keep one. They chose the Global Hawk because it had the advantages. It could fly farther and carry more. The Global Hawk flew for the very first time on February 28, 1998 at Edwards Air Force Base in California. The first seven planes were built to test out the design and see what they could do. These planes were quickly sent to the Middle East, where the military needed them, especially during the war in Afghanistan. Even before it was fully ready, the Global Hawk went into production. Nine Block 10 models were made, with some sent to the Navy and others used in Iraq. 
The last Block 10 was delivered in June 2006. These drones are quite unique. They can fly for up to 30 hours at a time, covering as much as 40,000 square miles of land in a day. Since it flies higher than regular aircraft, it doesn't wear out as quickly. Its Raytheon sensor system includes radar, electro-optical, and infrared sensors that can work together to gather detailed images. The radar can even track moving targets and send their position and speed to the ground team. The Global Hawks camera can spot objects as small as 12 inches from 20 kilometers in the air. It can fly on its own, but in busy areas, ground pilots control it using a satellite link, just like flying a crewed plane. The ground team includes the mission control element for planning and processing images, and the launch and recovery element for takeoff and landing. These ground units can be in different locations, connected by satellites and antennas for communication with the drone. It carries a sensor system called the Hughes Integrated Surveillance and Reconnaissance. Hyzar is a more affordable version of a sensor package originally made for the U-2 plane. It's also used on other aircraft, like the U.S. Army's RC-7B, and is sold internationally. Hyzar combines radar, optical, and thermal imaging systems. These sensors are controlled by a single processor, which sends data in real time to a ground station at speeds up to 50 megabits per second. The radar operates in the X-band and has several modes. One mode tracks moving targets over a wide area. Another provides detailed radar images over a 23-mile wide area. And a third gives even finer detail over a smaller area. In 2006, the USAF tested upgrades to the Global Hawk, including a sensitive SIGINT processor and a new radar system called MPR-TIP, focused on improving surveillance. In 2014, the Block 40 Global Hawk flew its first mission to improve maritime surveillance, tracking ships on the water with a new radar system called Maritime Modes. This system includes two radars that work together to track moving vessels and capture radar images of them. Several years later, Northrop Grumman also added weather radar to Global Hawks to give real-time weather information. This radar helps pilots detect storms, turbulence, and other weather details. The radar installation was finished by late 2019. The visible light and infrared sensors on the Global Hawk are part of the same system using shared optics to capture detailed close-up images. It can also carry an optional SIGINT package to gather more signals intelligence. To improve the performance of this aircraft, the design was changed, giving it a longer nose and bigger wings. The new version, called the Block 20, could carry up to 3,000 pounds of equipment. The first Block 20, which was the 17th Global Hawk built, was revealed in August 2006. It took its first flight in March 2007, and testing continued into 2008. The Navy also purchased two Block 10 Global Hawks to test their ability to watch the seas. These planes were part of the Global Hawk Maritime Demonstration Program. In 2006, one of the planes took part in a big military exercise near Hawaii. Though it flew from a base in California, it helped the Navy track ships and send images back to the fleet. But the development of these drones didn't stop there. Later on, Northrop Grumman entered a modified version of the Global Hawk, called the RQ-4N, into a competition for the Navy's Broad Area Maritime Surveillance Program. In 2008, the RQ-4N won the contract, and by 2010, it was renamed the MQ-4C Triton. This Navy version is different from the Air Force's Global Hawk, especially in its wings. The Triton can fly as high as 50,000 feet to scan wide areas, but can also drop to 10,000 feet to get a closer look at the targets. Its wings are built to handle the stress of these altitude changes, with added protection against ice and lightning. In June 2002, the Navy retired its last Block 10 Global Hawk from the Middle East after a 13-year mission. This plane had been used since 2009 to keep an eye on the Persian Gulf, flying thousands of missions. It was replaced by the more advanced MQ-4C Triton. Shockingly, the Global Hawk faced the risk of being canceled due to high development costs. By mid-2006, the cost per aircraft was 25% higher than expected. This was because of fixing design problems and adding new features. Congress was concerned and considered ending the program unless it could prove its importance for national security. However, in June 2006, the program was reorganized and an important assessment report, originally due in 2005, was delayed until 2007. 
The plan to produce 54 Global Hawks was extended to 2015. In 2011, the Air Force decided to cut its plan to buy 22 Block 40 Global Hawks down to 11 to save money. That same year, a report said the Global Hawk was not reliable enough. Still, the Secretary of Defense declared the Global Hawk essential for national security, saying it cost $220 million less per year to operate than the U-2 spy plane and could carry more sensors at once. However, in 2012, the Pentagon decided to stop buying the Block 30 version because it was more expensive and had worse sensors than the U-2. However, they planned to buy more Block 40 Global Hawks. Between 2010 and 2013, the cost to fly the Global Hawk dropped by over 50%, going from $40,600 per hour in 2010 to $18,900 per hour in 2013. This was partly because they flew more hours, spreading out the maintenance and support costs. The Global Hawk was supposed to replace the U-2 by 2019, but in 2018, plans to retire the U-2 were postponed indefinitely. In February 2020, the Air Force hinted at retiring the U-2 in 2025, but later clarified that no retirement was planned. The Air Force also announced that would retire the Global Hawk in 2027. Despite the plan for retirement, the German Air Force, known as the Luftwaffe, ordered a special version of the RQ-4B drone called the Eurohawk. It was based on the RQ-4B Block 20, 30, and 40 models. It was equipped with sensors built by EADs to replace Germany's old Dassault Breguet Atlantique spy planes. The Eurohawk had six sensor pods on its wings, and these pods could be used on other aircraft too. On August 8, 2013, the Eurohawk set a record by flying for 25.3 hours nonstop in European airspace, reaching a height of 58,600 feet. In 2014, there were talks about restarting the program to test the drone's spy capabilities at high altitudes, as other attempts with Airbus and Israeli drones had failed. If testing succeeded, Germany would buy a new carrier similar to the U.S. Global Hawk. Germany is also thinking of using the Eurohawk sensor equipment on the U.S. Navy's MQ-4C Triton, which meets airspace certification standards. In March 2021, it was announced that Germany plans to display the only Eurohawk, the RQ-4E, at the Bundeswehr Military History Museum by 2022. President Obama approved a budget to explore whether the U-2 spy plane's advanced sensors could be used on the RQ-4 drone. Northrop Grumman successfully installed two key U-2 systems, the optical bar camera and the senior year electro-optical reconnaissance system on the RQ-4 using a universal payload adapter. This test showed that all RQ-4 drones could be upgraded in the same way. Northrop Grumman and the U.S. Air Force decided to test two RQ-4B drones with UPA and U-2 sensors. The upgrade included adapter fixtures, a new cover, and software updates, allowing sensors weighing up to 1,200 pounds to be fitted under the drone. Northrop Grumman also aimed to install the MS-177 multispectral sensor, which has improved optics and a rotating feature to increase the view by 20%. Raytheon created a self-protection system for the Global Hawk, known as the AN-ALR-89, which includes radar and laser warning receivers, a jamming system, and decoys to protect the drone. While the Global Hawk is no longer used in combat, it's now helping the Department of Defense test hypersonic missiles through the Skyrange program. By using drones instead of ships, which take longer to prepare, missile testing can happen more frequently. The Global Hawk, now called Range Hawk, has been adjusted to track missiles and has already supported multiple missile tests over the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.